What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Going from zero to producer in 90 days. I'm your instructor, Torbjorn. Today's lesson is all about song form. This is an important one. We've covered a lot of stuff in the last couple videos about how to make loops, about how to take our instruments and create different versions of those instruments adding audio effects, all this type of stuff. And now it's time to figure out how long each one of those things should play for and in what order. Quick review of our last video. We talked about our audio interfaces and signal flow to get up and running with some home recording. We talked about monitoring, how to make sure that you're hearing the best stuff in your headphones when you're recording. And also with that comes a conversation about buffer size. We set everything up to record to actual audio tracks in Ableton. And then we recorded a bunch of percussion instruments and some guitar sounds and chopped it all up and made a simple beat. That was pretty cool. Now let's dig into the lesson for today, song form. Most pop and dance music is made up of just a few parts that loop and repeat throughout the song. There's some variation, so it's not just the same thing playing every time, but fundamentally it's like the same chord progressions and the same rhythms and just different interesting ways to represent those. The order and the length of each one of those sections helps drive home a story or a feeling or a mood. There's two types of songs we're going to talk about today. One of them is uh, dance music, like an EDM song. We're going to look at my track called Rap Kid. And then we're also going to look at one of my hip hop group Grandmasters tracks called The Five. And I think a lot of the same rules apply with hip hop and pop music and rock music and that kind of vocal, um, vocal driven music where the vocal is the main element that you're listening to. A lot of the same rules apply. Typically around built around storytelling, verses and choruses. And dance music, which is what we're going to look at first, doesn't always have lyrics. So a lot of times you have to rely on dynamic changes and rhythms and different types of beats, drums and percussion to make the song what it is. All right, our first case study is my song Rap Kid. You've got the song form written here. And if you look up at the top here on Ableton, I've made little markers, intro verse and all of this type of stuff. It's a pretty short song, and I'm going to talk over some things while we're listening to it just to kind of explain what's happening. But there's two unique things that need to work when we're making a dance song. One, it needs to be danceable. It needs to be something that can, the people on the dance floor can dance to. That's probably the most important thing. The second most important thing, I think, is that you need to have loopable sections so that your DJs can mix the song and so that when they're performing and you're throwing it in a DJ set, that there's no breaks in the beats. If you've got a drum beat going in one song and you've got another song that has that same drum beat, the idea of DJing is that you're going to stitch those two songs together by playing them in time with one another. So the ending of one song fades in with the beginning of another song. DJ mixing. And so we need to make sure that we've got some sections in our song that serve DJs so that it's easy for them to do that. Let's take a listen. Starting off with a little intro, straight into the verse. I've paid my dues. Baby, everything I have I'll give to you. So like I said, not all dance music has vocals, but this song does. Here's our chorus. see some drums are starting to come in and then we get this build up section so here's our loop here comes the drop so we've got two sections of the drop here we're still in the a section Starting to get this kind of ravey sound over it. Some vocal chops. Rap kid. Now we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Here's the B section. So 
So some of the sounds are changing in this section. Even though the drums and bass are kind of all doing the same thing. Now here comes another verse. Same chords as the first part of the song, just the lyrics have changed. Here we get to the chorus, Rap Kid. We lose the drums, so we're bringing the energy way down here. Building it back up, here comes another build. Into the second drop. Now we've changed the drum beat up in this section. We had like a break beat thing earlier and now we have this bass house vibe. Four on the floor. Bringing back the Rap Kid sample. And now here comes the B section. The same sounds that were added in our earlier B section of the first drop, but now it's happening over a house beat instead of over a break beat. Rap Kid. And now here comes the outro. So we've taken a lot of the elements out. We're basically left just with the drums and the bass and maybe some textural elements in the back. The idea is that the DJ is starting to play another song at this point. So now it's just the drums. We've lost that 808 rolling bass. Now we've lost even more textures and it's over. So that explains that song form. That's a really common song form in dance music. One thing that's worth knowing is that like, you can't copyright song form. My composition teacher in college used to tell me this all the time and several producers that I've collaborated with and that have taught me over the years have said the same thing. If you have found a song that works, drag that song into your session and figure out what's working about it. If it's a quiet section that is eight bars long, it goes into a louder section that's 16 bars long, try to reverse engineer those things. I feel like a lot of people get concerned that that's like cheating. And my answer to that is like, I don't think it's cheating at all. And even the times that I've tried to really faithfully recreate someone else's track, mine always ends up different. And so I think you just got to be like stress-free and without fear when you're taking um, when you're taking someone else's artwork and you're using that as inspiration. Some of the most famous songwriters of the history of music, as far as I know, have done that. All the way back to classical music, jazz, rock and roll, and it's so common now in dance music as well. The trick here with the dance music song form is that you need to find the right balance between repeating an idea and keeping it fresh. So what I typically do is I start small, two or four bar sections, come up with a drum loop, come up with some kind of idea, and then duplicate that, copy and paste it. So if you started with a two bar loop, move it up to be a four bar loop, but change something in the second half and then do the same thing so that you're building off of one foundation of one simple idea and adding lots of variation over time. Generally speaking, every eight bars, something should be introduced, changed, or taken away. While your two or four bar loops might be something that's not very noticeable, when we're talking about our eight bar loops, we need that to be a little bit more noticeable. Imagine like we gain a uh, percussion element, or we gain some chords, or maybe we lose something that was playing in the section before. 
Dynamic changes are super important in dance music too. You've probably noticed quite a few sections where I drop sound, drop a lot of the elements in the track so that the next part can be loud by comparison because loud is only loud if it's next to something quiet. All right, let's take a look at the next track. This is Grandmasters. This is my hip hop or my rap group with my buddy Joe Fish. And this song features Wands, who you maybe know from Thrift Shop, a song that he did with Macklemore. This is our song that we did together called The Five. More about the vocals in this case. Broadly speaking, the verses build the relationship with the listener and then the choruses make the story relatable. So it's all about storytelling, all about the lyrics. Everything needs to focus around driving that idea home. The music just should support that feeling or that mood. Let's take a listen to this. We'll talk about the song form as it goes on, starting with the intro, nice and simple. Easily loopable, so this works in a DJ set as well. Adding some claps. Here comes the chorus. If you chill and you still wanna ride with me, hop in the whip, going up and down the five with me. If you chill and you still wanna ride with me, hop in the whip, going up and down the five with me. We roll, we go, top down with the pedal to the flow. We roll, we know that. Five Here comes the going first verse. Bring the energy way down for the verse. Take a lot of the elements out so we can focus on the vocals. Now it's been eight bars. We get some extra percussion elements, so we're switching it up every eight bars, similar to the dance music. Here you see Wands coming in with his vocals, getting ready for the chorus. All right, here comes my verse. Similar to the verse before, but we've got some different elements playing here. So there's two flute samples and we kind of split them. The first flute sample only plays on the first verse. The second flute sample only plays on the second verse. We're going to get that same kind of pre-chorus effect. You'll hear Wands' voice coming in here. And then everything cuts out here. And then a big explosion of energy for the chorus. Here comes the outro. Loop the chorus and we put this kind of lo-fi effect and some extra reverb on it. Same thing here, we get a section with like minimal stuff happening so that the DJ can loop in the next song if this is going in a DJ set. Right on.
So kind of different song form there because we're not really focusing on there being a lot of elements that will fuel a dance floor. We're more focused on the storytelling and supporting the lyrics. So the song form, we get these way longer sections here for the verses. This chorus section, which is more or less the same thing. We've got a few different things that we tracked vocal-wise that make them unique from one another. But more or less, this is like the same part copy and pasted and we just hear it three times because that's the important lyrics that we want everybody to remember that's the catchy part that's the sing-along part loopable sections in the intro and in the outro for the djs so the thing that makes hip-hop beats easy i think is if you are good at reductive arrangement what a duck what reductive arrangement means is that we're going to start by writing the fullest section of the song and then we're going to work backwards from there. So I actually have a show track version of this song with almost all the vocals removed from it. And just to prove my point here, if we listen to the chorus, you'll hear a little bit of vocal recordings in there still because we have some of our backing vocals still in the tracks when we perform live but you'll hear a better idea of just the instruments. Listen for those flute samples, listen for the drums, the 808, all that kind of stuff, and then we're gonna compare to the verses. So there's like an organ sound, there's the flute, ba -da -ba. there's uh, drums and 808s. And so now let's compare here to the first verse. This is what the verse sounds like for Joe. So we get that different flute sample and then we get the main one only the, every fourth time. We've got rid of the hi-hats and we're using shakers here instead. And then halfway through, uh, the shakers go away and they're introduced with hi-hats to bring the energy up. Little more of a trappy kind of vibe. And so let's compare now to the second verse. This is the verse that I'm rapping on. So that flute sample that comes in on the downbeats on Joe's verse, I don't have in mind at all, but I have more of that flute sample that's prominent in the chorus. My verse starts with hi-hats and then halfway through it switches to shakers. So we get kind of the opposite dynamic effect between these two verses. Bring the energy down here. And there's plenty of different things that you can try with your percussion, ride cymbals, hi-hats. There's closed and open hi-hats if you want a, a short ticky sound or if you want to open like shh kind of sound. Lots of different options there. Shakers, tambourines, Latin percussion, like bongos and congas and claves and all kinds of different stuff. There's sampled percussion. There's loops of percussion. I feel like in hip hop beats, a lot of what makes it unique is the change of percussion. I guess that's true for dance music too. Changing percussion every eight bars, adding things, changing things, removing things. That's what's going to make I think for the most part, that's what's going to make a really, really good sample that you want to hear over and over, not feel stale after you've heard that thing play, you know, probably nearly like a hundred times in a, in a four minute song. If you're hearing the same sample, that's like a bar or two bars long. Well, let's review real quick. We looked at two different genres, dance music and hip hop. And of course, there's different song forms for different songs. We're typically working in eight or 16 bar sections when we're talking about making a main loop and then creating variations on that. You can start small, two or four bars, and then duplicate your loops to make them longer. Just make sure you change something in that second half so that we're not hearing the same thing over and over and over. You gotta find those sections that you can loop so that your songs are DJ friendly and you want to make sure that you've got variation every eight bars in your song like we've been talking about reductive arrangement great tip if you're making hip-hop beats 
something that there's going to be a more fluid forefront and by that i mean something like vocals that are going to be the main focus you can allow for a little bit more repetition i feel when you've got lyrics that are unique from verse one to verse two but reductive arrangement basically again just means starting with a 16 bar loop and then copying that over and then taking a bunch of stuff away so you make the chorus or you make the loud section of your song first and then when you loop it over to make the intro or the verse or the bridge or whatever quieter section you can just start to remove things that are giving it that high energy and that's an easy way to add variation big thanks everybody for watching another video big thanks to ableton for 90 days of ableton live 10 suite that's right they extended that trial and we're going to take the 90 days to learn how to produce music song form a super important one thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video happy producing peace out